Independence Day, Numbers by the Year, 1776 to 2022. The longest Numbers by the Year series so far of Volume 2 of the entire Numbers by the Year catalog. Episodes in chronological order. Episode 1, July 4th, 1776. Episode 2, 1777 to 1909. Episode 3, the 1910s to the 1920s. Episode 4, the 1930s to 1940s. Episode 5, 1950s to 1960s. Episode 6, 1970s to 1980s. Episode 7, 1990s to 2000s. Episode 8, 2010s to the present day in the 2020s. Episode 9, series rant slash recap. And episode 10, series montage slash finale. Sit back, relax, don't touch that mouse if you're interested enough, and subscribe for future Numbers by the Years content throughout the fall and winter. Hello everybody, I am Brian Mullins the Fox, your delightful host. We're finally over all these numbers now, and I want to really rant so passionately, and you'll understand why. Throughout all the other eight episodes, we went from what they ate on July 4th, 1776, 1777 through 1909, and we just continued to roll on through the decades from there. Changed the menu a couple or a few times to make up for the statistics that aren't available to the public or readily available to me. That's okay. There isn't any effort in hiding statistics for no reason. It was either incomplete or completely useless. And to top it all off, we started using the average price of a July 4th cookout from the American Farm Bureau Federation all the way back to 2013 at the earliest possible. And that's about it. Now here is the rant. Why is it that the general population of the United States of America think or even have the nerve to believe that this type of information is quote-unquote useless? What is useless to anybody? How is it useless and why? Why do people like me actually care about doing this when what I really should be worried about is my future on not just the internet but in real life too? If the number is the correct answer that you are looking for, it's not useless. If there is a graph, if you say Statista has an entire set already set up for you to go out, look up, and read it, well then go ahead and read it. It doesn't mean that everyone will get it. It doesn't mean that everyone will particularly care about it. And it certainly does not, under any circumstance, mean that everyone will be intelligent enough to actually, quote-unquote, get it. If the number is misleading, for example, Christmas dinner statistics that don't exist, then any other information like the 22 million number or that it's so impossible to come up with data slash statistics from your own country, so you had to steal it from another country like the UK, then shit like this is completely useless. But who am I to even remotely know who doesn't care to know about information like this? And why or why not? I'm just some Corsac box furry on the internet, churning out videos like this and ongoing series like this and others, going into as much detail as humanly possible. You have to define to yourself what the word useless means before you go off on some retarded diatribe and complain about how someone like me didn't do well enough on crunching those numbers down. Or how that the point I am conveying is not only lackluster, but completely wrong. There will be a time that everyone is so goddamn reactionary to a single mention of any number, big or small, will somehow be an infinitely perfect example of how and why people shouldn't take people like me or you seriously. Well, I mean, do they have a point? They wouldn't necessarily be complaining when the information the person is giving to you and the humble audience is true and accurately reflects reality or that it even accounts for inflation or other factors like that. If they did, maybe they're just biased, or maybe they're just trolling, or what the fuck do I know? I want to be philosophical for a beat and take you on a ride. It's going to be a bumpy one, so bear with me. Would it necessarily be a battle between short hands or small minds or brains? I mean, come the fuck on, really? 
Imagine data slash statistics in the future being so, quote unquote, useless in the hearts and minds of so many, even though it's not that it would be either information that they can't cope with. So they have to deny giving any of it the time of day and the credence it actually deserves or even worse, do all of that, but not pretend to be willing to accept that they are either completely wrong or they're all liars and hypocrites. Why are debates, conversations, DMs, voice chats, and even Discord chat logs, response videos, and even tweets that fail to rebut anything of quote-unquote worth a thing then? It really tells us a lot about how disingenuous and fake these conversations and quotations really come off as. Jesus Christ, imagine the sophistry in the future on the internet or in conversations in the real world. Just absolutely unfucking believable. You all had the audacity to watch my content. But anyone outside of this who thinks all of this is just useless should actually either stand up to where in the discussion slash debate they stand on sideways or shut the complete fuck up and quit wasting my time. A useless piece of information is not blatant misinformation or disinformation about something that isn't necessarily contextually complete or true. A useless piece of information is a number or point that doesn't have any real need of being used as information, nonetheless, nor does it have any useful bearing on reality as it stands. Useless information is not the same thing as a lie. If you spread or share around a piece of useless information, you're either just completely ignorant or completely and blissfully unaware of what you're talking about. Maybe you just weren't paying attention, but didn't care to anyway. Which is fine, right? Yeah, it's fair, I guess. It may very well be true, but you don't care about it enough to fully acknowledge that it is. To everyone you know, or to anyone at all. And that's why useless information is so fun. We don't have to lie to you for cheap clicks and likes on the internet. Or for a meeting to your pointless career and your pointless financial endeavors in your life in the future. So don't get caught up in these short hands or else you will truly show just how useful these long arms really are. I have been your delightful host, Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. In the next episode, there won't be any further recordings done for this series. I am done. Goodbye to you all. Thanks for watching.